Hey everyone, welcome to Moving Matt. We do all things cameras with a dash of vlogs and a little bit of travel. And today I'm going to be doing something that I know won't be divisive at all, and that is putting up the Sony A1 versus the Nikon Z9. So if the pass is any indicator, I'm sure this will go over super smoothly, and the comment section will be very kind. But just to anticipate a few of your comments, have I used the A1 and the Nikon Z9? Well, I'm sure you can tell from my channel size that I'm kind of a big deal. People know me. Well, I'm very happy for you. So Nikon definitely sent out a prototype Z9 to me. And with the Sony A1, I'm sure you can look at the size of my channel and realize that, you know, I can afford a Sony A1. So for people who are sarcastically challenged, no, I have not tried either one of these cameras. You're a phony. So there's obviously gonna be some elements that I'm gonna lack, such as, you know, what does it feel like in the hand? What is it like to flip around in the menu section? What's the button layout feel like? Those type of things I'm definitely not gonna be able to bring into this comparison. But I would also like to argue that those type of things are a little bit more on the subjective side anyways. Also, if you are maybe just a reviewer who gets this camera, most of the time you don't really have enough time to get a feel for how this camera is gonna feel for you long term. So I think those things are absolutely valuable, but I do not think it should disqualify me from being able to compare these two cameras and give at least my opinion on which one I think is the better camera. So you may be asking yourself, why am I doing this type of thing? If you're a Nikon shooter, you're definitely gonna go for the Nikon Z9. If you're a Sony shooter, you're definitely gonna go for the A1. It doesn't really matter. These are high-end flagship cameras. I guess that's kind of true, but this is gonna be a fun video, hopefully. And I like to break down tech either way. But I also hope that this will maybe help inform somebody who is maybe just getting into cameras and is trying to decide which system they wanna be a part of and maybe what is something that I can look forward to if I do work my way up to this caliber of camera. Or maybe you're just like a super rich person who wants to get into cameras and just wants the best of the best camera. Well, you're welcome here too, and you can you know decide between the two or, or maybe just be pretentious and go buy a Leica. So with that all out of the way, and with maybe the, let's say 65% of you who are still here, being optimistic a little bit, let's jump into this thing. So the first category that I'm gonna go over is the photography. So with the Sony A1, we have 50 megapixel stacked sensor. It shoots 30 frames per second raw with the electronic shutter. It shoots 20 frames per second uncompressed raw or with lossless raw. On the Nikon Z9, we have a 45 megapixel stack sensor with only electronic shutter shooting 20 frames per second raw, 30 frames per second in JPEG, or 120 frames per second JPEG at 11 megapixels. Now with the Nikon Z9, the 20 frames per second is raw lossless compression, so they do not have an uncompressed raw. So that is a factor here, really not that big of one, but it is a little bit of a factor. Now, when it comes to the photography overall, the photography specs, personally, I am gonna give this one very narrowly to the Sony Alpha One. The reason being you do get the 30 frames per second raw. It does have that extra five megapixels, which doesn't mean too much. I also like having the option to have uncompressed raw along with the lossless compressed raw. The Nikon Z9, like, it's extremely close here. I do think that that 120 frames per second mode is super cool and it's a great feature that should maybe come to Sony and Canon in the future. But I do not think that that one 120 frames per second mode, you know, maybe makes up for the extra raw that you get out of the Sony here. Here. So, you know, Nikon just, you know, hit those dislike buttons right now. Sony <laughs> hit the big like buttons. And then you can change that with this next category because now we're going to video and the Alpha One offers 8.6K down sampled 8K30 that kinda doesn't overheat. I mean, it, it overheats a little bit. It's not super bad, but it's, it's definitely not unlimited here. You can also get 4K up to 120 using pixel binning. Now, pixel binning is usually not the best way to go about things, but their way of pixel binning seems to be, I don't know, magical. Whatever they're doing with it, I hope 
that if they have to pixel bend in the future, they use whatever technology this is. With the 4K, it is 10-bit 422. Also, we know it has excellent dynamic range. Also, you get a lot of different color profiles with the Sony Alpha 1. Now, if you go over to the Nikon Z9 at launch, we have 8K 30 for up to 125 minutes at 10-bit 422. We also have 8K 60 and 8K RAW support coming in a future firmware. You also have 4K 30 down sampled from that 8K, so a super high quality 4K 30. And then again, now you have 4K 120, but it goes back to the pixel binning, kind of like what happens with the Sony Alpha 1. Now, as far as the color profiles, we have InLog as well as HLG. And in the future, we are getting ProRes RAW, and I'm not sure if that's gonna be ProRes RAW at the 4K, or if it's gonna be ProRes RAW at the 8K as well. So in the video category, I am definitely gonna give the win here to the Nikon Z9. So, you know, all the, the Sony people can start disliking this, and hopefully some of you Nikon people will, will start hitting the thumbs up here. But I mean, I just think that the numbers speak for themselves. Sony definitely has some amazing things going on with the Sony Alpha 1, and they have uh, some pros there in the video section, but it just doesn't outweigh the sheer power that the Nikon Z9 has in video. Moving on to the reason that the Nikon Z9 can offer those incredible video specs, and that is the body. The Sony Alpha 1 has a fairly small body. It only weighs 1.6 pounds or 737 grams if you're a drug dealer. It has dual CF Express Type A cards and also it can double for SD cards as well. So that is a super cool feature. It has an EVF with 9.44 million dots in it. So all the dots and the rear screen is three inches with 1.44 million dots. So it, it's it's terrible, it's, it's a bad rear screen. <sighs> I can't do this every video, I, I hate. On the other side, we have the Nikon Z9. The body is huge in comparison to the Alpha 1. It weighs in at 2.9 pounds or 1340 grams. It has dual CF Express Type B cards. The EVF has 3.69 million dots. So it's not like super high on the dots as far as that goes. But something that they're doing with it is, I think it's called like an, a live EVF type thing. So it's kind of supposed to be acting like a DSLR EVF, even though it's a digital EVF. Now with the rear screen, it has a lot of different tilting action. It is 3.2 inches and it's a 2.1 million dot EVF. And it's, it's a better screen. Okay, Nikon has a better screen here. Now, as far as the body goes, I think this is really gonna come down to personal preference here. Do you like a smaller camera that is a little bit lighter, easier to pack with you? And you can add an additional grip to it as well if you'd like to add that additional grip. Or do you like having something that is more tactile, that is, it is a larger body that maybe feels a little bit more solid in the hand? And also, having that bigger body is probably the major factor that is allowing it to have all these great video features. With the Sony, they're wanting to keep everything so sleek that maybe that is the reason that they're having to cut down some of the video features. So I think there's some pros and cons here. And on the body, I will say that it's a draw. Now that brings us over to the autofocus with the Sony Alpha 1. Your autofocus is gonna be extremely fast here. It's probably a little bit faster than the Nikon Z9 even at this point. Sony's just been doing great things with their autofocus for a long time now. It's gonna be very, very reliable. And so with the autofocus you have those features and those advantages for the Sony Alpha 1. Now on the flip side, the Nikon Z9 is very comparable as far as the speed goes, or at least from what I've seen, but I don't think this is gonna be quite as fast as the Sony camera here, but they do offer nine different types of subjects that you can track here, and you can do that all in one mode, which I think is absolutely incredible. I know from having the Sony a7S III, 
I really hate having to flip back and forth between the different modes. I think it's kind of cumbersome and I wish that maybe they at least offered a feature that one mode you could have all the different types of things that you could track at once. So you weren't having to switch back and forth and maybe missing the moment. So again, with the autofocus, I'm gonna call it a draw. I think that there's pros and cons with both of these cameras. I think they're very comparable with the autofocus. So there you have it, the Nikon Z9 and the Sony Alpha 1, they, they're, it's a draw, it's a draw, we're good. You know, both of you guys can just be happy. Wait, is, is there, there's, there, there's gonna be something else here, isn't there? The big elephant in the room, besides the size of the Nikon camera, is the fact that the Nikon Z9 is $5,500 and the Sony Alpha 1 is $6,500. So, the Nikon Z9 wins? I don't believe it. They're supposed to draw so that nobody gets angry at me. It's supposed to be a draw. Why did the Nikon Z9 win? Why did I write this video? Why am I doing this to myself, to my audience, to my subscriber count? Pander powers activate. Okay, look, both of these cameras are absolutely incredible cameras. The Sony Alpha 1 is absolutely incredible with what it can do in that really small package. And the Nikon Z9 is absolutely a powerhouse here. And if you're maybe new to cameras here and you're wanting to, you know, just get into a new system, I think that Maybe Sony is offering a little bit more here because you have a very great thriving mirrorless lens system going on. You can get multiple different lenses from multiple different companies and a lot of them are gonna work great on your camera no matter what you get. And Sony has been doing mirrorless cameras for a while now. And I would go as far as to say that over the past, you know, three or four years, Sony, generally speaking, is pushing the industry forward more often than not. But I definitely wouldn't be able to fault you for wanting to go over to Nikon if you're wanting to start out as well. Maybe you just love the rich, you know, history that Nikon has. Maybe you look at the Z9 and you think, well, that looks like that is the best camera available right now. And if that is gonna be what they're gonna be offering at the pinnacle, maybe that technology is gonna be brought down to the, the future lower end cameras or the mid tier cameras as well. And I would not fault you for going that way either. And I genuinely am hoping for a very healthy Nikon moving forward. So I really do not think you could go wrong either way. I do think it is gonna be about going to a store, getting these cameras in your hand, feel what a Nikon feels like, feel what a, a Sony feels like, and which camera is gonna make you feel like going out and shooting more, what camera fits you and your style more. So, whew, I deflated that situation pretty fast. But I hope that you've at least enjoyed this video. I hope I didn't upset anybody too much, but I know that's gonna be the nature of YouTube, and I know we are all passionate about our brand of cameras, and I think that that is also a very good thing. So if you're upset, that's all good. Drop in the comment section below. If you happen to agree with me, also drop in the comment section below. You know, fight it out. Give me your reasons for why you think one is better than the other fight in a very civil manner. Do not try to make it too personal here, but you know, have at it. This is the internet. So if you've liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you like camera news and all that type of stuff. And until next time, peace.